Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. First off, United Airlines. What is up with them? Okay, if you guys haven't heard this story, I'm, I'm just going to fill you in on a little bit of the details and it is truly disappointing. It, it's customer service at its worst. Effectively, they needed the seat, even though they'd sold it to that gentleman, for their own staff. So they needed him to leave because he paid less than other passengers on the plane. He's a doctor and he needed to be at work tomorrow. So my first thought about this is the reaction that most people on the plane, most people watching the video footage is that this is crazy. What is going on? You know, why are they doing this? And I think the answer to that question is obedience to rules. So if you look at people's obedience to authority, we have the Milgram experiment, which talks about how people are obedient to authority. Blunt, knife, stick, word, arrow. Answer, please. Continue, please. The answer is arrow. 360 volts. Go on, please, with the experiment. Please continue. And I think the airline had some rules in place around overselling seats. So those rules were put into practice, which is basically they were to offer compensation for and ask for volunteering of passengers to get off the plane. And I believe the compensation went up to $800 plus a hotel plus a new flight the next day. No one volunteered, they did need four people off the plane for their own staff. Here's a bit of a problem, they applied overselling rules when my understanding would be that staff would not have tickets. So they aren't, they, they would be on standby. If there were free seats, they would be flying in those. If there weren't free seats, they shouldn't be flying. I think in some ways the rules dehumanized the situation for the staff and they weren't able to think outside the box, as it were. So, you know, the, the big message that a lot of YouTubers are putting out there is boycott the airline, and I'd just like to consolidate that idea. That's a great idea, is to influence by hitting them in the pocket, as it were, hitting them financially by not using their services. Um, I think the other takeaway that people haven't talked about is this whole idea of obedience to rules and obedience to, and in particular, written rules. So thinking about that and thinking for yourself, what is the right thing to do? Not what the rule is, but what is the right thing to do in this situation? I think that's a really good question to be asking yourself. And whenever you're, you're found in any sort of situation, and hopefully you're not found in a situation like this, but if you are, Please think about the idea of what's the best thing to do. 150 volts. Oh. Experimenter, that's all. Get me out of here. I thought I had high trouble. My heart's starting to bother me now. Get me out of here, please. My heart's starting to bother me. I refuse to go on. Let me out. Uh, continue, teacher, please. Go on. <clears throat> the next word is sad. Well, I'm not going on if he refuses to do it. The experiment requires that you go on, teacher. If he refuses, I won't. Whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until he's learned all the words. Take the check back. I'm not going to hurt the guy. No, the check's not the issue. Uh, it, it's absolutely essential that you continue. 
Well, he don't want to. Well, I refuse to. Well, you have no other choice. You must yes, go I on. Yes, I have a choice. That is, if you don't continue, uh, we're going to have to discontinue the uh, experiment. Well, we'll have to. He says cut it out. After all, he knows what he can stand. Right, I took that thing, the, the slight one, it was enough for me. I wouldn't want to be getting that every time I got a wrong answer. That's my opinion. That's where I'm going to stand on it. How do you feel? How do I feel? He was getting a shock. I feel all right. <laughs> I'd like to ask you something. At one point, uh, were you, you were doing something a little unusual. Were you laughing at some at one point? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> At first, I was laughing at him, and I heard him yell, ouch. Why do you think you were laughing? I don't know. I thought it was funny, I suppose. Did and then I got to think, when he said, no, that's enough, he had enough, so it wasn't funny to me then. One might suppose that a subject would simply break off or continue as his conscience and temperament dictate, yet this is very far from what happened. There were powerful reactions of tension and emotional strain in a substantial portion of the teachers. One puzzling sign of tension was the regular occurrence of nervous laughing fits. Fourteen of forty subjects showed definite signs of nervous laughter and smiling. In the post-experimental interview, subjects took pains to point out that they were not sadistic types and that the laughter did not mean they enjoyed attacking the learner. I love this guy, by the way. He's so fucking happy that he got to keep his seat. You know, that he's like, yeah, I got to keep my seat, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. Oh, man. Yes. Look how happy he is. So I, I think this helps explain what PewDiePie was saying about the guy in front who was smiling about this situation and that this is actually part of the emotional stress and s emotional tension that he's feeling. And that's those, his way of responding to those feelings. I'd like to tell you a little more about the experiment. First of all, uh, uh, the gentleman in there was not being shocked. He got no shocks whatsoever. Hmm. Did you think he was? Certainly I did. In fact, uh, I tried to get my finger off the button as fast as I could. No, he wasn't being shocked at all. And uh, uh, the main purpose of the experiment was to see how you would react to Mr. Williams' orders whether you would uh, take them or defy his authority or what. I defied it. You certainly did. Why didn't you go on? To the hell with him. Who the hell is he? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, see right? No, thanks for one. I think from a psychological point of view, that they also chose the worst time, or most expensive time, to get people to give up their seats. They're already sitting sitting down and they're already on the aeroplane. I mean, even, even if you prepare them before that, before they board the aeroplane, before perhaps they even go to the airport, each one of these stages that the, the, that the customer has been through is getting ready, going to the airport, getting on the plane, psychologically preparing them for their destination, to suddenly be told, you know, we want four of you off the plane. I think that becomes like, each step becomes more expensive. The incentive has to go higher and higher. And I think also one of the mistakes they made was by first offering $400 compensation when everyone is already on the plane. The problem with offering $400 and then going up to $800 is that psychologically, it doesn't sound like we're working together. Psychologically, it sounds like you tried to screw me before at 400 compensation when you could have initially offered me 800. So I think like, if you're talking in terms of an airline saying, hey, we, we need a favor from our customers, you scratch our back, give us, up, give, give us your seat and we'll scratch yours. I mean, who doesn't want to be treated like royalty on an airline? So I think if you take that more hum humanistic approach to your customer service, you get the more willingness of the consumers who are willing to give up their seats. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a hotel, I'm gonna get $800 compensation, I'm gonna get a first class seat or whatever the next day. You know, they're gonna look after me, they'll remember me for doing this for them. Maybe my next flight, they'll also remember me. 
you know, because they feel like they've made this connection with the airline and helped the airline out. Rather than this kind of almost deceitful way, who's going to get off the airplane for 400? Okay, we were just kidding. We'll offer you eight. If you don't take the eight, we're going to force you off the airplane by selecting the people who paid the least for their seats. He beats me. Straight up. Pay him. Pay that man his money. <laughs>